Initially, I wasn't trying to be inconsistent on YouTube. In fact, I was trying to be consistent on YouTube because isn't that the advice that's drilled into our heads over and over again? Be consistent. Consistency is critical to a channel's success. Consistency is literally the key to success. How do I be more consistent? I even made videos about how to be consistent. And then the last video that I made was about consistency secrets. And inside that video, I opened a whole new can of worms when I said this. I think it is really, really important for consistency to learn to rest, not quit. So a number of things happened in March 2023 last year that caused me to take my own advice to heart. And I actually stopped creating videos because of this advice for 10 months. 10 months on YouTube. And my channel didn't die. In fact, I made more consistent money from my YouTube channel in this past one year than I ever have before. So in this video, I'm going to be totally transparent and share with you how being inconsistent on my YouTube channel saved my financial health as well as my mental health and my physical health. And I'm gonna show you the plan I have for my channel going forward and how you can use it as well. Why I paused publishing recorded videos. Number one, I had a dental emergency in March, 2023 that completely knocked me out for a month and recovery took a lot longer than I expected it to. Life happens. You too could have an emergency or something that happens in your family or you get sick or you need to take holidays or vacation time. Like stuff is happening in our lives that can derail us at any point in time. Now, I know that the general advice typically is, you know, have enough video schedules so that when you need to take downtime, you have like regular content going out every week on your YouTube channel. That's the traditional advice that's given. But to that, I say, screw that. I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. <laughs> if you need some downtime, then so do your viewers. I think that we, instead of becoming creation machines, we should also think that our viewers are not consumption machines. And the creation process, as well as the consumption process, needs to be more of an ebb and flow rather than a, you know, go, go, go all the time. The second thing that happened was that I was working on creating my course. Now I've created digital products in the past before and they have always been while I'm also creating free YouTube videos. And what happened specifically in 2019 was when at the height of my coaching client career, uh, I was having 17 clients inside YouTube Intensive while also creating free videos on my YouTube channel. And in the summer of 2019, I burned out so badly that I landed in the hospital and it was really, really hard to recover from that. And so I decided this time round that I was gonna take a full month off to be able to create my course YouTube Launchpad because I was revamping it and creating it completely from scratch. Now, instead of taking one month, I actually took three months to complete my course. And so sometimes you may need to take a break from your you know, free YouTube content to create your offers and your programs. And it's hard sometimes to be able to balance creating free videos and, you know, paid programs at the same time. Creating a product requires focus. And as I was creating my course, I realized that after working for four hours every single day, I was depleted. Like that was the end of my tether. I could not focus on creating more content after that, which leads me into reason number three, which is that I had started perimenopause. And so that kind of made me understand, oh, that's kind of why I am feeling so tired and fatigued so soon because my body was going through all of these changes. My body was literally telling me, Salma, take a break, slow down. This is the max you can do right now. So take the hint. And so I took the hint, <laughs> thankfully, and I I slowed down and I stopped the free video content because something had to give and I reprioritized my health and my productivity. So for you, this might mean understanding how you are at peak performance. What are the times that you can actually give when you are at your flow, at your best, and you're creating your best work? And then when does your body need to take a rest and when does your mind need to take a rest? So it's all about that balance of like, you know, being really creative and being really productive and then knowing when it's time to rest. 
not quit. And and I really found that, you know, that balance between creating the free content and the paid programs and getting that balance right was really, really key for me in being able to move forward with sanity. Number four, I was trying to settle into a new country after uprooting my entire life. So as most of you know, I moved from Pakistan to Portugal in August 2022. So I actually spent all of 2023 settling in into a whole new life. And it was exhausting. The process of immigration took us a whole year to do. But after we reached Portugal, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was actually pretty exhausted. Like there were signs, like, for example, I didn't feel like traveling at all. Just the thought of getting on an airplane was like fatigue intensive for me. But then there were all these other things that we had been used to a support system back in Pakistan. There were my parents, there was Ali's parents to depend on. And and we didn't have that when we came here. So it was like a new learning a new language, the kids going to a new school, living in an apartment for the first time in our lives. And all of these new things that we had to navigate were exhausting mentally because they were taking time to adjust to. And so all of my focus was on navigating this new life. And as a result, I was having to constantly make decisions like about every little thing in my life, right? And that was causing me a lot of decision fatigue because, you know, I was constantly making decisions. And in fact, I remember saying to Ali at one point that could you just please take this off my plate because I cannot you know, keep making all of the decisions. And that's really unusual for me because I'm typically like I take charge and I make a lot of decisions in our lives, but I was exhausted. And so in this process, the first casualty had to be free content. Um, Something had to give. And so it just had to be that. So what happened to my channel and business after 10 months of no new videos? Surprisingly, very little damage. Sure, my views were down and my watch time was down and my metrics were affected, but not by all that much. So during the entire year of 2023, I was still getting on average a thousand views on my YouTube channel. And that was mostly because of where my views were coming from. 75% of my channel views were coming from search, both YouTube search as well as external, which was largely comprised of Google search. And so search, as we all know, can be evergreen. So if your video is about a topic that's popular and the video is well optimized, meaning it ranks high in search and is discovered easily, then that video is an evergreen video, which means that it could potentially get views forever. So that is the magic of getting views consistently and in a stable way from evergreen videos. And so as I was looking at my metrics, that kind of planted the seeds of my evergreen videos strategy. And so while my evergreen videos were performing really well on my YouTube channel and getting rediscovered all the time, thanks to ranking high, my business was actually also doing really well. All of the effort that I had put into creating my flagship course, YouTube Launchpad and putting all of my creativity into that was now starting to pay off. So I got uh, about 177 clients currently enrolled in YouTube Launchpad, which is amazing. The second thing that was happening was that I was doing, I had done two cohorts of my 10 week program, YouTube Intensive. So I was enrolling clients into that, working with people, taking them from starting a channel from scratch, all the way up to getting clients and leads and customers from their channel and making money from their YouTube channel. So that was also happening. And then the third thing that was happening to make my business run was that I was still doing brand deals behind the scenes. So I was still working with brands and that was helping me to get some consistency in my income and stability in my income and helping me to earn from my YouTube channel. And so even though I only published 10 videos in all of 2023, I still made five to $10,000 a month from my YouTube channel and my coaching business. But will this work for you? Now you might be thinking, well, Selma, you've got 300 plus videos on your channel when you first became inconsistent. So of course, you know, your videos were evergreen and they got in all of these views. But what about me? I'm just starting out. I have a brand new channel or not enough videos 
uploaded yet, will this actually work for me? The answer is yes. And I want to share with you some specific examples of people who have written to me with implementing the exact strategies that I share on my YouTube channel and the results that they have gotten with brand new channels and being inconsistent with their YouTube production. So the first example is from Alan, who was actually quite skeptical when I shared my inconsistency strategy with him. And this is what he had to say. He followed up with me six months later and he said, I just wanted to report my early results. I took another channel I have, which was essentially dead, rebranded it, created a series of eight videos and uploaded them. And in the first week, I got 7,500 views, 950 hours of watch time and 200 new subscribers. And I also made $500 in sales to my membership site. Eight videos. Check. 7,500 views, check. 200 new subscribers, check. $500 in sales, check, check, check. I mean, come on. Those are spectacular results from a brand new channel with just eight videos. And it really goes to show you that you do not need to be consistent to get these kind of results. The second example I want to share is from Rick. Now, Rick responded to my video about making money from your channel without first reaching the coveted 1000 subscriber mark. And he said, good stuff. I have 800 subs. The average video gets 125 views and my channel makes more than $55,000 per year. So another example of somebody with less than a thousand views, not yet monetized on the YouTube platform in the traditional sense, but still making a healthy income from his channel. Amazing example. Thank you for sharing, Rick. Next up, we have Naomi. Now, I love what Naomi was able to do in her own words. I didn't even have 100 subscribers and got a retainer client who saw my channel and stayed with me for seven years. That's retainer paying every month for seven years. By the time I had around 800 subscribers, I had gained around five to six more retainer clients, all who found me through my channel, all staying with me on an average of two to five years. That's paying every month for every year, a ton more money than I would have made in the YouTube partnership program. I still haven't made it into the partnership program, but I still have paying clients. I can attest to the fact people can earn revenue having a YouTube channel and not having a ton of subscribers or videos. So Naomi is a great example of being more strategic with your videos, not being, uh, you know, very production heavy with consistent content, but understanding how to create videos that will get you clients. And finally, I want to share with you the example of my client, Sharon, who shared that I took off two months, August and September in 2022, and then one month in December 2022, and my channel grew 3,200 subs. <laughs> I take a break when I need it, and I don't feel bad at all. It prevents me from feeling burnt out and overwhelmed. I love, love, love the process. And more recently, Sharon shared with me that her AdSense revenue has actually been growing and she is not all that consistent with her video production. But when she is creating those videos, they get all of the love and all of the strategy input into them. So I absolutely love that. The strategy I'll be using going forward and that I recommend for you as well. My personal strategy for my YouTube channel, keeping all of this in mind, is going to be to create a lot fewer recorded videos on my channel. Now I'm going to take it as it comes. I am going to use my periods of high energy and high creativity to create my content. That's going to be my creation phase when I am really into it and feeling it and it's all flowing really, really well. And the rest of the time, I'm going to let my evergreen videos do the heavy lifting for me. The second thing that I'm going to be doing is doing a lot more live streams on my channel because they're easy and because they help to establish relationships and trust much faster than any other kind of video content can possibly do. So after a year of being inconsistent on my YouTube channel and seeing amazing results on my channel, on my business, on my health, I want to share with you something that is more crucial for YouTube success than consistency is. And that is strategy. 
strategy eats consistency for breakfast. <laughs> Here's how. A solid strategy attracts your ideal audience. A solid strategy creates evergreen views coming to your channel. A solid strategy positions you as an authority. A solid strategy helps you convert random YouTube viewers into email subscribers. And a solid strategy helps you make money from your YouTube channel without having to be monetized by YouTube. So with a solid strategy, how consistent do you need to be? As often as you'd like to be. No pressure. You could choose to create lots of content during periods of high creativity, or you could take a break and slow down when you're just not feeling it or when life happens. The beauty of this model is that it's up to you. But as long as you are strategic in your videos, you will grow, your channel will grow, your business will grow. And isn't that what we all want ultimately? So the real question is, what are strategic videos and how do you make them? Strategic videos are videos that attract your ideal audience and position you as an authority. I've got an absolutely free training on how to create your first or your next 10 strategic authority videos. And you can go and watch that training from the end card here or from the description down below. And I will see you in the next video.